I reloaded orange, transposed the data, and now we're live again. So this is looking at each individual gene's expression profile. And uh, we can look at some sort of subset of this data. And so each one of these little uh, differently colored lines is going to be the expression level of a gene, or of, um, of one of the samples. And each up and down, right, each actual point that this line hits is the expression level of a particular gene. And each differently colored line indicates one of these samples is from a different tissue type. So this is a one other way that the bioinformatics add-on can help you visualize bioinformatic data, which is, you know, if you can get it in the right format is nice, but luckily enough the Geo Datasets widget allows you to access to a large repository of bioinformatic data examples that seem to be in the perfect format for analysis with the tools in Orange. So. Moving on, we're going to look at the gene selection widget, which is one of my favorites. So this provides you with examples of uh, statistical significance, and you can use uh, many different scoring methods for a particular gene in relation to its classifiers. Uh, one very interesting thing about this is you'll see at the top it says two selected genes when I'm looking at the bone marrow values. Testes is the same, the liver is three, Muscle is two, brain is two. But what's going on here? What do these selected genes mean? We didn't actually select any genes. And this data set is actually looking at, you know, 392 genes. So why is this widget selecting three? Well, I'm not exactly sure uh, how the statistics of this works out, although I know that these are different kind of scoring functions for evaluating the statistical significance of something in relation to its classifier. But when I select, let's say, the liver values, and I hit commit. I'm going to output this to a data table, because when I'm committing something, I'm saying this widget, whether it takes input or not, is going to output something to another widget. If I mouse over it, it says that this widget outputs to an example data, data a table with selected genes. So let me drag this over to a data table, and I want the selected genes, and let's look. So these are three genes that that widget, based on its scoring function, found interesting in relation to its effect on liver tissue, as far as how the expression in those three genes in liver tissue is so uh, significantly different than that of other tissue types. So this is a glorious widget right here. So when, you, when, you're, when you're dealing with bioinformatic data, and especially like we're looking at now, we're looking at mRNA expression data, um, we're trying to find genes of interest. We're trying to figure out uh, of our different classes, which are going to, you know, in this example, be tissue types, which means that you know, our kind of goal is to learn about what are the genetic indicators that, you know, or you know, the, the genetic causes that make these cells differentiate from each other and that enables us if we can identify genes of interest then we can uh, warrant further study into those genes to determine what is the actual mechanism that causes this gene to make this difference what is it about the expression level of this gene that causes the tissue or it has this expression level to become a liver tissue uh, I mean the research being done in stem cells is uh, all about finding the differenti uh, differentiation between tissue types based on uh, genetic makeup so this is interesting. And uh, let's take another example with cancer data. So this is, uh, once again, uh, blastoma data on humans. And I just clicked it away, but it was still supposed to be there. Anywho, it's still collected, so I'm just going to not try to break it. So let's go down to gene selection. And so this is a much bigger data set. It's finding 1,536 genes. Um, and so using the full change scoring method, it is found 196 genes that it has determined to be statistically significant in causing some sort of, uh, for causing a sample to, sample's tumor to be non-metastic instead of metastic. So then, if we do the same thing as above, pull out the data table, go over to gene selection, and now we have, uh, no, I forgot to commit, so I never forget to commit. So this little button 
make sure that your data is going to go through the little pipe to where you want it to go. And now we have all of these scored functions, or all of these uh, scored data points that our widget thought to be important. And now we can we have one place where we can go through and look at all of them. Um, Alright, so we're going to look at the last two widgets, uh, or the last two widgets we'll be looking at of the bioinformatics add-on. Uh, so the first of these is heat map. So if you uh, frequent any journal articles or bioinformatic journal articles where they're examining some sort of set of genes and looking at their expression uh, profiles in relation to some sort of problem or context, uh, you've probably seen an image of a heat map. So let's take a look at one. So, let me make this window a little bigger. The idea here is that you have genes on your y-axis and the color of that point... I do not seem to be able to zoom in. Oh, I can make this bigger. Oh, god, okay. Let's make this a little bigger. We can see the gene names. Alright, this looks good. So, the color here is going to indicate either a high expression or a low expression. So. We can look at these and we can see that all of these tissues seem to have low expression in this one gene, and that gene is CXXC1. Uh, let's uh, I've clustered this. Ah, here's a great example. So we have one type of tissue here and two different types of tissues here, and we can see that there is a very, very large difference across, across these three different genes, uh, 7904, 7905, and 7906. Funny enough that their names should be so similar. And uh, we can see that in this tissue type that we have much higher expression, in these two tissue types we have very, very low expression. Uh, so in trying to determine the genetic reasons for why these tissues are differentiated from each other, we might want to examine those two genes, at least in the relation to those two tissues, because these other tissues don't seem to be as defined in relation to those genes. So the reason that we get nice little patterns where all these genes of interest kind of lined up is that over here you see this sort genes button. So I used clustering, which means that if we made everything a little too big here, um, well let me turn off clustering off and show you. So if I turn this on no sorting, they won't really be sorted up and they won't, oh, I guess they're still aligned from when I sorted them before, uh, but this is a bad example. So anywho, I did clustering and I get a little error message, but then it's actually clustering these genes, and you can see the little tree hierarchy here, where it's trying to figure out which genes should be lined up next to each other, rather than just the, uh, uh, what I believe was alphabetized ordering that came in from the data set. Um, so this allows us to have a nice visual uh, analysis of which genes are affecting uh, different tissue types. Uh, let's take one more look at this for our uh, metastatic blastoma data. Um, and this doesn't seem to be... when I look at this, uh, I can see individual genes... Oh, it crashed! Bear with me. So I've just gotten Orange back up and running and uh, after three attempts of transposing the data and then trying to cluster the genes uh, in the heat map widget in order to visualize them properly, um, all three times it crashed. Uh, so once again, the widgets in this bioinformatics add-on are not built into the core of Orange. They are add-ons and they also have, uh, as far as I have found, little to no documentation on the internet. And so some of the widgets might be temperamental, but you know, this being a, a move towards open source and freely accessible uh, science, plat science research platforms, especially in relation to bioinformatics, which is a field which can be done from the home or office, and anyone can really make surprisingly uh, significant advances uh, in the field just from their home computer with platforms like this, or a little bit of programming know-how. Um, so, that's all I'm going to say about heat map, how temperamental it's being. So, so the last thing I'm going to show, MA plot. What is MA plot? Let's see what it has to say. Ah, it has a better description up here, I believe. MA plot. 
So normalized expression array data on an MA plot. So for anyone who has ever had to deal with microarray data, uh, you'll know that normalizing the, exp uh, the luminosity readings from the different cells of the microarray is uh, one of the most common problems the bioinformaticists face. Uh, when you get that expression level of data back, uh, you're, you're going to have numbers from you know 0 to 1, and you're also going to have numbers up in the 700s and the 1000s. But when we look at this nice already normalized data from any random data set here, and I have to commit this again because it's going to crash before. Uh, let's look at these gene expression values. Ah, this is this is a prime example of unnormalized data. I believe this one up here is normalized though. And once again, let me go and commit that. Uh, uh, uh. Yes. So when we look at all these numbers, they're all in a range of uh, negative one to positive one. So we can, you know, pretty easily compare two genes to each other because we know that the scale that we're looking at their expression on has been normalized. This is not so with this other data, so I guess this would be a prime example of when we might want to normalize. So, the way this widget works is very neat. We'll see all of our data points, the expression level of uh, various genes are being plotted here. Um, and some of them are blue and some of them are red. Why is that? Well, it's because of the z-score cutoff here. So the idea is how high in relation to the kind of mean expression of the genes in our data set does a value have to be before we consider normalizing that data. So we take this down, let's cut this down to maybe 1.0, and we'll see that even more things have disappeared. So we're essentially setting the cutoff for figuring out which genes we want to normalize. So, or how, how we want to normalize in relation to the distribution of unnormalized scores. So, we've committed this with a 1.0 z-scores cutoff. And I have to reset this signal. And we look at our data table. And, oh, this is a terrible example. Oh, God. So, it doesn't appear that things are normalized as I had intended. I guess I need to play with this more. Uh, hmm. Well, I played with MA plots before with unnormalized data, and I was able before to get it down so that. Hmm. Let me let me play with this for a second. Be right back with you. So, due to the temperamentalness of these uh, orange widgets, I haven't been able to normalize them as I was when I was reviewing for this, but. Uh, I was using different data sets then, but I guess that just reflects poorly on me. Um, so the idea is, and I wish I could replicate it for you now, is that when you have data that's on a wide range, you want to be able to kind of bring it down so everything's going to be between two kind of discrete points, and you can tell what the expression of one number is relative to the other without having to think about, you know, Oh well, is there anything with the expression score of a hundred thousand? In which case, you know, the difference between something with an expression score of two and an expression score of three, you know, would not be so dissimilar on such a scale. Um, so this, at the very least, will allow you to visualize kind of the differences in how your data, how different the expression levels are for each uh, gene. And in playing with it before, I was able to get it normalized properly so that when I output it to a data table and compared it with the original data table, I found that there were drastic differences in how things were normalized and everything was uh, much more coherent. Playing with data, uh, whether they can make worthwhile analysis or not, uh, just anyone who's been using Orange and using these different classifiers, uh, they work very well. But in the context of bioinformatic data, having these tools available is uh, nifty, and you, you wouldn't want to ignore it. So, anywho, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope this helped.